great to be here back at DevCon. I think I've spoken at almost, I think at every DevCon since the beginning. So it's, I think, the best Ethereum conference in Germany, so it's really great to be here. So I want to speak about GmbH token and how you can tokenize your GmbH. Um, but let's step a little bit back to look at history. So uh, taking you a little bit through the journey, how I came here and from where I'm coming from. So if you think about Bitcoin, I discovered Bitcoin in 2013. I, I know there are some people here who hate it, some who love it. I still like it. So meaning Bitcoin has this brought digital ownership to the mass, let's say not to the masses, but to a lot of people. You for the first time understood that you could digitally really own something. Um, in 2014, we got Ethereum, and there is this snippet in the Ethereum white paper um, where Vitalik basically predicted that a lot of tokens would be built. This is a bit of zero code. It's not directly the ERC-20 standard. This was not defined in the white paper. <coughs> but he already predicted there will be lots of tokens for all kinds of use cases. So back then, you just called them your own currency. And I still like the Ethereum white paper a lot. If you read it, almost everything in there um, got fulfilled. It is like a prediction of the future, from DAOs to ENS to tokens. The only thing I think Vitalik didn't predict was NFTs, but anything else you can find in the Ethereum white paper. So this was the beginning, that you now could say, for those who have been around it during the time, before Ethereum, people actually started building their own chains per token. So you had Primecoin, Namecoin. So if you want to do any application, you start your own chain with your own consensus, with Proof of Work, or later on Proof of Stake. So Ethereum solved that problem that you now already have a chain, which is stable and robust with a st stable consensus layer, that you can build your token on top of. So in 2016, I was most known for the project, the DAO. So we took it to the most radical approach, if you want, fully decentralized, just a smart contract. Everybody could put Ether in, get the DAO token out. That's not a topic of my talk. You know what happened. There was a bug in the smart contract, and we got a hard fork. Another story for another day. That's now almost 10 years ago. But what we learned from that, except of, of course, smart contract security, is that the fundraising mechanism, using a token to fundraise, worked like a charm. And what happened after that? After that, we had this ICO bubble. You see this uh, little dot here in 2016, this 160 million. Um, but what happened afterwards was billions of dollars were raised using tokens. Many of those projects were scams, bad projects. Some of them were good. Again, another discussion is how good or bad ICOs were. But still, the fundraising mechanism of letting people buy your token, they can see the market cap on Etherscan, it's all completely transparent, it's all digital, so you don't need a notary or anybody like that. And they can see exactly to what terms the token is technically tradable if there's a market. So those aspects of the ICOs and DAO times was really great. So, but what did we get afterwards? So you see it going down in 2018 or so. Well, SEC came, Bafin came, and others saying most of those, most of the tokens are most likely securities. And I'm not a lawyer. I don't want to speak to this point directly. But what happened to most of those projects, or what was the legal setup? Not all. Again, many are different. But most of them did they choose a non-profit foundation in Switzerland. And the reasons for those is that you do not want to have two cap tables. And I'm also strongly advising against doing a for-profit entity, let's say a GmbH or AG, and then you have a utility token next to it, or any kind of token, because as an investor, you have no idea where the value is. The CEO of this company has a lot of power to direct the future value towards increase in token price or increase in company share price. So two kind of cap tables is always, for me as an investor, an absolutely no-go. So I won't have one cap table. So and this was the reason why they went for non-profits, because in non-profits, those shares have zero value. Um, they are actually owned by the state to some extent in Switzerland. So this is the non-profit foundation. And then they tried to make tokens. And to connect the token price to the product 
Roughly speaking, they just kept the amount of tokens existing, something like 100 million, and said, in order to use the product, you need to have a token. So if the usage of the product goes up and the limit, there's a limited supply, means the value of the token goes up. This was roughly the model we saw at the time. And you can argue now about some of them are security tokens, some not, depending on what you do. But ironically, even though those projects wanted to give the token holder dividends and uh, real value and exit participation, liquidation proceeds, they could not because then it would look like a security. So those investors, if you look at the paperwork, they donated to a Swiss nonprofit and actually got a donation receipt. And a paper saying this token is nothing, will be nothing, has no value, and whatever. So and this is actually ridiculous. And investors put money into this, those kind of tokens. So this, is, this was not a good situation. So we looked into how can you like, redesign the system and stick, don't make it too complicated. And I like this quote by Buckminster Fuller who said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality to change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So we are based in Germany, so we looked at the German GmbH and what you can do to tokenize it. And if you would go to a lawyer, they would say, go somewhere else, like go to Estonia or go to Cayman Islands or Switzerland. And you can still do this, but it's a tax hassle. It's, a, it's just a hassle to change the location of your company or having something abroad. So we looked to how, you can, how can you do it in Germany for a startup, which is a GmbH. This is something we've worked on now for almost three years, and I think we've solved it. And so in the next slide, I have one slide with all the information about what is this GmbH token. So it's a little bit dense, but if you understood this slide, you have, I've got most of the information what I wanted to convey today. So the GmbH, first of all, you cannot tokenize a real GmbH share. Those shares are on the commercial register called Handelsregister in Germany, and only the notary has any access to it. That's a problem we all know. But what you can do is giving out something called participation right on German Genussrechte. So we are using those, or we can also call them profit participation rights, and they include dividends, exit proceeds, liquidation proceeds. So if you sell the company or if you liquidate the company. This in essence means every financial right or economic right the shareholder has, the token holder has as well. So every time a shareholder gets some money per share, the same amount of money per token goes to the token holder. Meaning one token always has the economic value of one company share. Plus, uh, the token holder gets some basic um, information rights, um, like the annual financial report. And one additional thing, which I think is very important, this is a put option to give the token back to the company and receive an actual company share. This, of course, has to happen at the notary, and we do not think this is done very frequently or it's actually only needed if you need governance rights. Because governance rights to really like just make decisions in the company cannot be given out to those Genussrechte or participation rights. So you can only get them by actually converting your token to an extra share. So in essence, a token holder has the same economic rights as a shareholder, plus he has a way to convert the token into a share. So with this, token equals company share. Technically, I don't have to speak too much about this here because it's simple for all of you. It's an ERC20 token on a public Ethereum chain. For crowd investing, we are actually using the Gnosis chain uh, since there are cheaper gas costs and nice Monarium integration and good safe support. That's why for crowd investing, starting with a 200 euro minimal invest, we're using Gnosis, but for the other things, it's on Ethereum mainnet. It's an ERC20 token with admin rights for the CEO, so you can burn and mint tokens. There's an allow list which he can or cannot use. If it is used, then only those on the allow list are um, allowed to hold the token or send and transfer the token. There are lockups. So you can say to an investor, you cannot transfer the token for a certain amount of time. And all of this is smart contract enabled. Also vesting contracts for employees. All of this on chain. So with this, you have a token which gives you full access to the DeFi ecosystem. So we are currently looking into how we can integrate this into DEXs, talking with PWN, how you can use your token, for example, as a collateral to give yourself a loan. So all those nice applications are now possible because you have a digital token on Ethereum. And now a very important part, how we connect the legal part and the technical part. It might, might sound a bit boring, but a lot of those security tokens had a problem 
that legally there's always an investment contract between a buyer and a seller. Even if it's explicitly, like in a document, or it's implicitly just by doing this um, trade. The problem is, if, let's say, my nine-year-old daughter is trans transferring the token, she's not legally entering into this investment contract, meaning there is this worst-case scenario where the token is technically transferred, but the legal rights are not. And this is the main problem of many security tokens. So how do you solve this, that there never will be like a dissolvement of to technical token and legal rights? Solution to this problem is something called public reward, or in German, Auslobung. So Auslobung is the BGB in, in the German law. It's a very simple thing, but powerful. It says you can publicly announce that you are rewarding a certain action. So, for example, if you find my physical wallet, I give you 1,000 euro. If you solve this mathematical puzzle, I give you 1 million euros. And the nice thing about this is, it's a one-sided contract. I'm making the statement, I'm signing this, I'm saying this. It's legally binding, even though you didn't sign. But if you fulfill the requirement, you can take me to court if I don't give you the reward. And we're using this mechanism that the GmbH is publicly announcing that it will reward the action of holding the token with dividends. The action of sending the token back to the GmbH with the put option. So you get those legal rights based on an action you can only do if you hold the token. And the action itself is trivial. You just push a button on your web, on your web app. So with this, it doesn't matter how you got the token. If it went through a DeFi exchange or whatever, um, if you have the token, you can always claim your rights based on this public reward or Auslobung. And you don't have to prove there is a valid chain of investment contracts. Because if, you, if this token gets traded, you have hundreds, hundreds of owners. Legally, you would have to check if all of them legally entered into the investment contract, that they're all correct, which is practically impossible. But now with this public reward or Auslobung, you do not need this. So and this is a very, very strong connection. Uh, we have worked a lot to figure this all out. So this, but the end result is, we now have an ERC-20 token on Ethereum, which is representing economically a company share, and it's always linked. So what can you now do with this? Well, first, it allows for something I like to call continuous fundraising. We often think about pre-seed, seed, series A, B, C, D, because it's just such a hassle to raise around. But here, you can continuously invite someone to invest. You just send out a link. Here, you can invest 100K at a 10 million valuation. Here's your link. And you can individually close the deal. And then you can go to the next, to the next, and to the next. And, it's, and we have now closed over 100 private investments on our platform. Um, we have one power user. He closed over 30. We have closed over 20. So it's super simple over the, life, the span of a year just to continuously fundraise at your terms. Um, it's technically tradable. You don't need any notary. It's an ERC20 token, and you can just use your Ethereum wallet, hold the token, and give it to someone else, and they pay you. It's what I like to call programmable equity. Ether, we like to call programmable money, and this is programmable equity. So you can do if this, then that, meaning you can reward your community. If they log into your, if they use your application, you can reward them with tokens, with 0 0.001 point tokens, something like that. So meaning you have now a very, very powerful tool for incentivizing your users. And you have one asset for all stakeholders. Currently in a GmbH, you often have the actual shareholder, let's say the founders. You have an employee who has a VSOP. Then you have an investor who has a convertible loan. They all are, they are part of your company. They invested, but they have a different assets, so they cannot trade. And with this, you have one token, similar like an HE has stock. Now you have for the GmbH, you bring the same advantages which an HE has into the GmbH. Okay. Now getting into regulation, one slide. So when you make an offer, technically, you need a prospect. And there are a list of exceptions, and two of them, we are, they are the most important ones. We are using them on our platform. First, if your offer is only directed towards less than 150 investors, you do not need a prospect, what we call the private offer. So business angels, family and friends, VCs, and so on. Meaning on our platform, you would just create, if there's some time, I might show you in the end, um, say those are the terms, this is the one the private offer is for, you're creating a link, sending a link to this investor, and he can then individually close this investment. So up to 150. If you want to do a public offer, and that's also one of the main achievements, 
what we like to call crowd investors, similar to an ICO in spirit, you can up to 8 million euros per year using something called a key information sheet, in German basis informationsplatt. Um, and we are providing this with a broker license we have through a liability umbrella. So we are, comp we are making sure it's compliant with German law. And on our platform, you can just raise publicly up to 8 million per year. This means you can have an invest now button on your website. So every time our, your users or those interested in your product are on your website and they like it, they click the invest now button, they see your current terms, they can just invest with a minimum of 200 euros. Um, you, can have, you can spread the word in social media, really shouting out, you can invest in my company. And this is legally compliant, up to 8 million per year. And this is really what we had with, crowd, with ICOs, just in a legally compliant way. Okay, now what are the applications? I already mentioned them, so to summarize them, you can do a private offer, meaning create an individual link for an investor with individual terms for up to 150 investors. Um, with an expiration date and continuously fundraise over a certain amount of time. You can do employee participation, which is tax optimized in Germany because the employees only pay income tax when they receive the token and afterwards, afterwards only about 25% in German Abgeltungssteuer. So it's much, much better than those VSOP programs. VSOP, they always pay income tax. So tax-wise, the best way to have your employees participating in your camp company, and we have smart contracts for vesting and cliff, and everything happens on-chain. And we have legal template provided by our lawyers, so you don't have to pay lawyers for creating those legal docs. They are all on our platform as templates, and you can use them as they are. And of course, we do not do legal um, advice. You can still ask your lawyer if they are correct, but technically they have been prepared by our lawyers, and we trust them. So, and then the last one, most importantly, crowd investing. So you can set a term such as price per token, max amount, max amount of tokens to be sold, and you can at any time just pause the fundraising if you have enough funds. If you still say, I need more, you can open it up again. If you urgently need money, you can de de decrease the price. If you have enough money, you could also increase the price. So you can change those parameters always with a 24-hour time window before to avoid any, um, or at least one hour time window before to avoid any MEV bots or other things. Uh, but you can always just change parameters and have a continuous public fundraise um, through Tokenize it. Okay, so that's it. Um, our vision or our mission, we enable everyone to become a co-owner of a company. So we started now with the GmbH. We are, the product is completely live with all of the features I just explained. Everything is there today for you to use. The next is to go to other European countries. And my vision is to be something like a Web3 based angel list for Europe, if you want. So meaning that all those legal entities we have in Europe, those which are private, like the LLC, ÖÜ, Saal, in Germany, the GmbH, that we customize this setup for, for each of them and then allow for all of them in Europe to fundraise through tokens. And I think it's totally possible. We have proven it that it's doable also from a legal point of view and in a compliant way. And you have this ERC20 token on Ethereum. So I have one minute and 40 seconds left. Let's give you a very, very quick demo of our platform. And just let's create a private offer. One second. Let's connect. So, so you can connect on a platform with your wallet, but using Web3 Auth in the background, we can also create a multisig for you using your um, social logins. So for those Web2 users who have no idea what a wallet is, they can also connect with Google if they want to. So I'm showing this here in the background, but you can also use your MetaMask, hardware wallet, whatever. So I'm now logging in as a founder for time reasons, I'm skipping the onboarding process. So I'm now already onboarded. I can now look at all the private offers, my employees, and the crowd investing, or I can create one of those, like a private offer vesting plan or crowd investing. So now let's just create a private offer for, one, for an investor. Um, I can choose if he gets a range of tokens he can choose from, or if he gets a specific token amount he can buy. So let's give him the right to buy 100 tokens. I call them here Pied Piper coins, PPC. Um, we are using stable coins such as USC and USDC, 
For crowd investing, we have integrated Monarium, so we're using EuroE there, which is a very, very nice user experience. They just do a SEPA transaction, we get a stable coin, push them through our smart contracts, and we're done. All with SEPA instant and seconds. So it's a super nice user experience for the crowd investor. So all the like all pieces are coming together right now. Like from Monarium, knows is safe. Uh, also that we have regulation which works for us. We don't need to love the regulation, but we can comply. It's possible. So we have this specific, uh, specific amount, let's say 100 tokens. I'm choosing um, EuroC, for example. The price per token is my price per company share. So if I have, for example, 25,000 shares in the commercial register, this means now if I put 1,000 euro as price per token, I value my company at 25 million. So um, I continue. I'm giving a duration. Let's say this is valid for one month. I'm choosing, I don't know, Andres Horowitz. Um, he can now, if I don't know him personally, I could require KYC, then he has to go through an ID now check. But for private offer, you don't need to do this because if you know them personally, it's fine. Um, it's just a help function here. You can do a lockup. In that case, the tokens are locked up during that time period, for example, one year or two years, where they cannot transfer the token. I'm choosing to have it freely transferable. So then you see the fees in the end. You are charging a 2% fee on the cash amount, which is way cheaper than your lawyers, I promise. And so then you see the complete, you also see the company valuation here, it's very small, you cannot really see it. You cannot, you can see it, okay. So if it's all fine, you click agree and create private offer and you get this link. And this link is what you share with your investor. He will just see company valuation, investment amount, your legal docs where you can download them. He can also see your pitch deck if you uploaded one and then he can choose yes or no. If yes, he sees your either your wallet where you can transfer the EuroC or he sees the IBAN if you choose bank transfer and just transfers the money and that's it. And so you can continuously fundraise and very, very similar for the crowd investing. The only difference here is that we have to do a suitability check, some more AML stuff, but it's all happening back in the background. So that's it. We're very proud of this product. I hope you're using it. <laughs> so thank you very much. I think we have time for one or two questions. Um, There's a mic. Um, thank you for the presentation. I have a question about the tax law perspective on this because the dividends are usually withheld and a normal dividend would be withheld with 26.375% in Germany. And with this dividend, for example, when you transfer, we also withheld in the platform, and also, um, yeah. So the dividends, so the short answer is, tax-wise, the GmbH token work exactly like GmbH shares. That's the short answer. So to a dividend, um, in Germany and the GmbH, if you pay our dividends, you need to have a, a shareholder resolution with a date. And what we do is, only if you hold the token at that date, you will get the dividends. So if you sell one day later, you are not selling the dividends with it. Basically, the token, if you hold the token at that date, we are doing a snapshot on-chain in the token contract, um, and then on the next day you are selling, then you will be eligible for dividends, and you can claim them later. And you're paying the same amount of tax as you would if there's a GmbH paying you out dividends as a shareholder, depending if you do it as an entity or a private person. Yeah, so ask your tax advisor, but it's essentially the same. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, he was the first. We can do it afterwards. No, let's go. Let's go ahead. But just that we have one more question for him then. Yeah, lovely service. I can't wait for you guys to come to Netherlands, where we're based. Um, so, you mention um, continuous fundraising, but at the same time, you're also talking about uh, putting a price on the token, which is linked to the share price. So. Uh, like, I, I'm familiar a little bit with the U.S. system, so I don't really know how it works over here. But there, for private companies, you go through a 409A process to set the share price before you're public. But so not if you get an investor in. Like, if you get an investor, it's basically you're negotiating a deal. Like, my company is worth 10 million or 20 million. What you're referring to is from a tax perspective, if you, for example, give employees shares, yeah. they need a a uh, valuation which is valid for the uh, tax officials. And here, yes, either there's uh, three ways to get this valuation. You can get a Wirtschaftsprüfer, like someone who checks your company and just puts a price on it. 
number one is similar to the 409 evaluation. Or if the tokens are actively traded, in that case, you can use this as a reference price. Um, those are the two options you have. But you only actually need this valuation when the employees are minting the tokens, because then they have to pay income tax based on that valuation. But for the investors or for the crowd investors, you don't need that. So, do we have one more question? We have a few more. I think we, we have time for the first. <laughs> maybe one, one more. Uh, hi. Um, how do you think about the governance rights of, of this whole thing? Because like, it, it seems like as a traditional investor, I would kind of like, I would look at your model and I'd be like, okay, I can't sit on the board. There's right. no way for me to actually have government, like kind of an influence Very on what good this question. company does. So how, like, is there like an implicit understanding? There's two solutions for this. So first of all, legally, they don't have any governance rights because they couldn't do it. But as long as they have a good relationship with the CEO, they can still talk to them, and they can do on-chain voting using snapshot and so on. They can still do all of those things. It's just not legally binding. So, but if he say, well, the CEO is not doing this, even though he made a vote and he doesn't do it, I can convert to actual shares and get be, be part of be an actual shareholder and have real governance rights. So this is like the, the like speaking from a game theory point of view. Why should the CEO say, I'm not doing this, if you can just convert to actual shares and then actually get legal voting rights. So if this is the case, then I would just accept the token voting and things like this. And at the last, for investors, you can still have a side letter with individual investors. I'm just not with the token, so it's not transferable. But let's say you're a VC and you want to invest and you have some different terms or want to speak about veto rights or something. You can have a side letter, and we do this as well as tokenize it, where some investors, for example, have veto rights if you would sell the company or stuff like this. So they can get individual governance rights through an agreement, which is dependent on them holding a certain amount of tokens, but it's not bound to the token itself. So if you would sell the token to someone else, he would not get those governance rights, but as long as you have a certain amount of tokens based on the side letter, you can have some governance rights. That's usually for larger VCs. For crowd investing, it's less relevant. Okay, thank you okay. so much. Uh, all the other questions, I think they can approach you directly. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Christophe will be around. So thank you so much for the thank amazing you. presentation.